So as we said, we are connected with acquisition unit, the Aquila, and through Wi-Fi, and we can see here green link, which means that connection is executed, and sync status green means also that there is a synchronization between uh, the two. Uh, there is the synchronization where there is the 50 hertz low frequency signal, which we can see here and we can see here that it is 50 Hertz and we can see a certain voltage so what we need to set here is the good full scale and the trigger level this is trigger level is marked by this arrow here I'm going to turn on high frequency noise right now so let's see how will this affect the whole story so we can see right now that the pulse number is increasing, which means I am generating some noise. How do I know it's a noise? Well, first of all, I press the button, high frequency noise, on the PD simulator, but also I see that the dots are always, um, let's say, the same, regardless of whether the sine wave is in minimum, maximum, or crossing the zero uh, crossing. Uh, in addition to this, now I'm also going to show you what happens when I press the button Send to Processing. So by pressing the button Send to Processing, what we see here, and this is the so-called PRPD pattern, is copied here, and then we do uh, an analysis and we create a classification map, so-called TF map. This TF map puts every point from time domain from here into a frequency domain, which is represented here and if we have only one signal it's not a big deal but what we're going to do is we're going to add one more signal so now I'm going to add Corona so I'm adding Corona and I'm increasing the voltage and we expect to see somewhere around here some dots starting to appear just about let's say now so we do see now two phenomenons. This is our noise, this is our corona. Now, how can I, let's say, uh, separate them? So, I can click the button send to processing and when I do that a new TF map will be generated. So, let's do it right now. And here we can see that we have two clusters. Cluster 1 and cluster 2. Now, what is very useful with this system is that I can now say what is this so right now here we see some noise we see corona but when I choose only these this group this cluster here I see that basically that cluster represents the noise which is very obvious right now we don't see any corona here but if I reset this if I reset this and choose the other cluster, which is this one with the higher frequency components, I will see here only the corona and actually no noise. With that, I can easily separate two types of signals, noise and corona, and if they were to be overlapping, this would be even more useful, but since it's not, it just shows uh, how powerful this system is in order to um, separate different types of PD so that we can observe each PD by itself. We know, by the way, that this signal here is a corona because, first of all, it is marked, markedly asymmetric, uh, which means we don't have anything on the positive side, which would be in the positive half cycle. Second of all, we see that it's very much uh, detached from the trigger level. This is our trigger level. This is another characteristic of a corona and it has a pretty high repetition rate. We see this becoming blue at the end, which means that we have a lot of repetitions with that same frequency. The fourth characteristic is that it has a pretty narrow amplitude dispersion, so everything happens here. There is nothing here, there is nothing here, so everything is happening here. And, as we said, it is detached from the trigger level. Um, I will now increase the voltage and we will see one more thing. Right now, we see a corona just in the negative half cycle 
and as I will be increasing the voltage, which you can see right now, sure, slowly but surely, you are going to see some dots happening here. So, 2-2, two, two, and we see that just about now. So, in this case, we have a corona in negative and positive half cycle. In this case, we are shooting electrons in the air, and in this case, we are attracting electrons from the air into our conductor. So, in short, I hope I have presented to you in a nice and an understandable way how separation of signals can be done using the TF map, also the PRPD of a corona, and uh, the characteristics of a corona phenomenon. Thank you.